He's if you notice in hip hop, Eminem is the only rapper that that nobody ever wants a problem with, including myself, man. Eminem is like the most lyrically insane. Even when I was going at fifty, and you know, and you know, me and Dre wasn't seeing eye to eye, man. I stayed away from the white dude. He a problem. I don't think it's a rapper he won't slay, and you don't even want a war with Eminem. You know, I used to think Eminem was better than me. He not. He not. He's not. I'm not saying I want smoke with Eminem. I'm saying I want smoke with Eminem, him and him. Since the early to mid 2000s, the name Eminem has been as synonymous with hip hop as Hulk Hogan was with wrestling or Michael Jordan was with basketball. Hovering above his closest rivals as the best rapper of all time, his immovable position in the culture cache has meant that even after his prime, Eminem emerged as the most popular male artist of the 2010s. But across all industries, it's natural that the most popular person is always going to catch a degree of hate. Yet in recent years, it seems that the hate for Eminem has gone beyond being too cool to admit to being a fan and veered into disrespect. Now, hip hop's perception of M has mutated to the point where he's now as discredited as he is celebrated. Uh, somebody said right now, Eminem is the king of rap. Why would you say he's not? You got to come with a better name. I ain't playing Eminem in my car. You playing me yours? You sliding around playing Eminem in your car, you and your old lady? For starters, we have the plain and simple facts of his success. When you're on top for as long as M has been, there's only one place to go. Let's not forget that M began as a counterculture figure, brazenly knocking down doors and thumbing his nose at every attempt at censorship. But now, he's an artist who's more likely to launch an NFT collection, sell spaghetti from his own gimmick restaurant, and produce music for a Marvel movie franchise. Now, it isn't entirely fair to say that Eminem has had it easy. After all, he's faced an uphill battle from the start of his career. Back then, hip-hop media hated Eminem. The source infamously refused to award him with more than four mics for any album, while XXL took aim at him with a scathing cover story in 1999 entitled Message to the White Man. But over time, M would overcome these hurdles through sheer talent. And as his flair for wordplay and eccentric persona penetrated middle America, he became the all-conquering man that retired in 2006 with Curtain Call. At that point, had he chosen to truly ride off into the sunset, M would have had a fairy tale ending like an Andre 3000. But, obviously, M didn't do this, and as he stubbornly continues to drop music even as he approaches 50, it seems like things are primed to get worse before they get better. Make no mistake, the primary guidelines for where M can be disrespected have been established for a long time, and in many ways, the most concise way of explaining them came from the unlikely source of Jermaine Dupri, in which he discussed the fact that M was more likely to beef with pop stars like Britney Spears and Mariah Carey than his peers. Oh yeah, Eminem, I left you out deliberately, he said on JD's reply. You know why? Cause to me you like a character in Disney World, known for dissing pop groups and Justin's ex-girl, don't nobody take you serious. But if you were really trying to pinpoint where it all went wrong, the revival era is where the disrespect truly began. An album that was received poorly by everyone aside from his stands, the socially conscious record, which featured the likes of Ed Sheeran and Pink, accomplished the opposite of what M intended. Rather than being any sort of resurgence, it actually proved that he was no longer the young, hungry voice of a generation, but a 40-year-old bemoaning issues in a way that the culture wasn't looking for, and it made him seem out of touch. The BET Freestyle Cypher, love the message. I love to see a white person using their privilege to combat prejudice. But yes. the bars was super subpar. Oh, it was a reach. <laughs> Donald Trump, like, okay, hey, yeah, white boy, wilding out on Trump, we love that. That act wore thin fast. Oh, he he yeah. even said that on Woo Kid. He was like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, know. I was mad he didn't I was respond. was disappointed. So that lets me know you weren't doing it because you honestly were trying to use your privilege to combat prejudice. You were just trying to get Trump to respond to you. Where his attacks on Bush on tracks like Mosh felt vital, everything he was doing now felt try hard. But where the songs themselves were an issue, what proved to be even more of a roadblock was how he handled the negative reception to the album. In some ways, the moment that B-Rabbit lists all of his flaws and insecurities to prevent Papa Doc from mocking him in 8 Mile used to be the case of art imitating life. Never afraid to poke fun at himself or make light of his turbulent upbringing, M's early material saw him switch up tones from aggressive to sarcastic and comical. But now, it seems as though something switched up, and instead of being unfazed by being the butt of the joke, he now exhibits his emotions on full display. With Kamikaze, the follow-up to Revival, M made a whole record as a response to the notion that he'd fallen off. The album featured Eminem taking aim at everything with more spite and less humor than ever before, signifying that the impenetrable force field around him was down. Maybe because it doesn't sound like everything else and, and, and what most people are doing, maybe that was what tainted their ear. I remember a time in hip hop where you had to be so different from the next person or you were trash. There's a shift uh, somewhere that happened that if it doesn't sound like everything else, then it's trash automatically. 
Suddenly vulnerable, rather than self-assured in his position as a legend, the world collectively acknowledged the fact that his sense of invincibility was gone. And before long, everyone was taking their shot. I, I'm not I, impressed by that because right. anybody can just at this point mumble. can memorize a bunch of fast words. Machine Gun Kelly can do that. This sounds like a really whack rapper mm -hmm. that's like in his mid 50s trying to do an Eminem impression mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of dad jokes. Like this is dad joke rap. I don't know what album y'all heard. I heard it. That knows it's over. I heard a that's fully aware that he has not said for about a decade now. Stop just throwing names out and thinking that that's gonna be a single because you said a bunch of names. You ain't said find another muse, pull from somewhere else. You superstar been sheltered and bored. MGK is right. Y'all been slaves to your own superstardom. You don't know about M. You don't know that it's probably three on the label that are better than you. While he ignored Gucci and never responded to Button's valid questions, M would once again dedicate time to battling lesser MCs and the likes of MGK and Nick Cannon. And as pointed out by Joe Button, it felt like rather than taking his respect as he once did, he was pining for his flowers in a way that is completely unrecognizable from Slim Shady. But talk about all you've brought to the game. You brought a lot more than that, and all of them ain't nice. This is the first time you ever came out and said that you bodied Hove on Renegade. Why'd you say that? Blueprint came out in 2001. It's 2018. M. It sounded like a news, news flash. Impression. You're not in the same ballpark as Hove. With the illusion now shattered that M would destroy the career of anyone who trespassed against him, he would continue to endure more and more disrespect on a regular basis. And in some ways, it was none other than his fellow Dre protege, Snoop Dogg, that set the tone by questioning his legacy on The Breakfast Club. Eminem, the great white hope. White rappers had zero respect in rap. Let's keep that one thou wow. None. He has probably put Eminem in a position where he could be labeled as one of the top 10 rappers ever. I don't think so, but the game feels like he's top 10 lyricists and all that that comes with it, but that's just because he's with Dr. Dre and Dr. Dre helped him find the best Eminem that he could find. Although it would have admittedly taken him by surprise, it's fair to say that M's response came across as more hurt than vengeful on music to be murdered by Zeus. With Eminem spitting that, I'm used to people knocking me, but just not in my camp. Last thing I need is Snoop dogging me. However, the beef would blow over fairly shortly when they collaborated on the track from the D to the LBC. But while two legends hashing out their differences set a good example to the youth, you can't help but take notice of the fact that this would have been inconceivable in the era where the all-powerful Slim Shady could unleash the fiercest smear campaigns pop culture has ever seen. Let's not forget, this is the man that essentially ended an incredibly prosperous career in Ja Rules and rendered someone like Moby a cultural punchline for decades in a way that he's never fully recovered from. And when it comes to signs of the reputational damage that Emmett suffered, none come more clear cut than the game's complete 180 towards Shady and the prospect of feuding with him. I used to think Eminem was better than me. Wait he up. not, he not, he's not, challenge it. I'm not saying I want smoke with Eminem, I'm saying I want smoke with Eminem, him and him. In an effort to coax Shady into a feud, Game would release The Black Slim Shady, a 10 minute track which is dedicated to trashing M and making a mockery of his style. On top of that, he's doubled down by taking aim at one soft spot that previously brought out Marshall's most ruthless side, his daughter, Haley. Although the game's attempts to draw Shady into a feud speaks to M's relevancy and the clout that his name still holds, the fact that he's gone from cowering in fear to taking aim at M depicts how the culture's perception of Shady has changed over the years, as now, he feels he could withstand even the worst that Shady could bring him, and escape with his career intact. From conceding that he was a guest in the house of hip hop to apologizing to the likes of Tyler the Creator and Rihanna for lyrics, M has only emphasized the weakness that he has now by making too many concessions in the genre which demands that you stick to your guns. As a result, Shady's gone from being respected for never bowing to pressures to filter his work to actively seeking to fit in with today's society when he realized that the shock tactics of the past had lost their vitality. Left with mounting criticism, one thing that hasn't helped M is the fact that those who are clearly influenced by him also command very little respect. As for every Kohler Kendrick who's paid tribute to M in the past, you have his disciples such as Hobson, Dax, and Token who are seen as corny rather than culturally vital. With these rappers who've traced Eminem's rhyme schemes and cadence finding more ridicule than reverence, it doesn't help that, through his success, Eminem also finds himself confined to a box in terms of his artistry. And as famed battle rapper and TDE affiliate Daylight thinks, this too feeds into the disrespect he faces. As today, M's audience only want one thing from him, and it's not anything groundbreaking. There's a lot of people in this world that don't relate to Eminem. The black, the black community, like the super urban community. I think we like Eminem, and I'll say this because I'm an Eminem fan. We like Eminem for his wordplay, but as far as like actual content, whenever Eminem tries to go very content-based, 
the world doesn't f with it. He dropped Kamikaze, everybody jumped back. Eminem's back, but it was a bunch of nothing, gibberish. But everybody was like, yo, Eminem's back. We've been waiting for this. He's back. <laughs> Eminem, rival, he was trying to tell the world something, and they wasn't trying to hear it. Clearly aware of the criticism that now meets his every verse, it's telling that the audience fatigue and inability to recapture his former glories is something that M has acknowledged on Wax. In a moment of candidness from Kamikaze's stepping stone, Shady captured the very essence of the problem, spitting. I will always be here, but that spark isn't there, and I don't know how to recapture that time and that era. I've tried hearkening back to it, but I'm fighting for air. I'm barely charting myself. Feels like I'm on the descent. Treated with even more disdain now by today's tastemakers than he ever was by the Benzino Rand source, everything from the media's view of him to the comments from his fellow rappers creates the notion that Shady of today is a shell of his former self. And while Jay-Z famously remarked on the Black album that they never really miss you till you dead or you gone, it appears that before Eminem can bow out of hip hop, he's got to reassert himself if he's ever to claim the spot that he believes he deserves in the top fives, or if he's ever to be feared as he once was long ago.